Hello and welcome back to Cinematic Venom and Happy Mother's Day! Now last year I did a review with my wonderful mum but unfortunately today she couldn't make it. So instead, filling in for her, I'm doing this review with my beautiful aunt, Annie. We're put on this earth to help people like I'm trying to help you. Aw, you're so sweet. I'm sorry, this is all wrong. It's not worthy of you. Throw it all out. You'll have to do it over again. Do what? You and I were meant to be together forever. Ladybird, I was shocked to find out wasn't about an actual ladybird. We see that she calls herself Ladybird and draws a weird hybrid thing and then I realised in America they say Ladybug and not Ladybird. Yeah, this is a Ladybird, so false advertising. I know that, Mr. Man! Alright, alright, calm down. So what does that mean? The movie doesn't necessarily have a plot as such. It's a coming of age film showing Christine, who demands to be called Ladybird for some reason. Okay, Christine? Ladybird. Is that your given name? Yeah. Why is it in quote? Well, I gave it to myself. It's given to me by me. Okay. Have you all got amnesia? <sighs> and it shows her struggling with her estranged relationship with her mum that she apparently shares with Sheldon Cooper over the course of her teenage life before moving off to college. I love Sheldon. So sweet. I do everything to try and make you happy. You just better start showing me a little more appreciation around here, Mr. Man. Aunt Annie, do you think you might have bipolar disorder? You did it! You did it! You did it! Maybe schizophrenia? Director Greta Gerwig spent years on the screenplay, originally under the title Mothers and Daughters, and was initially over 350 pages long. By 2015, she managed to secure some funding from IAC Films, as well as Scott Rudin Productions. Noah Bornbach actually offered to direct it for her after she had finished the script. And after consideration, she declined and decided to make this her directorial debut. Hell yeah. The movie was often sold as semi-autobiographical, but Gerwig confirmed that nothing in the movie actually happened to her in her own real life, and that it's just a harsh truth of stuff that she knows. She claimed that the lead character is actually the complete opposite of how she was at that age in real life. Though it takes place during the same time Gerwig graduated the same kind of Catholic high school in the exact same city as the movie, and Gerwig did take the cast and crew on tours of her old hometown in Sacramento, California, as well as providing them with her old high school yearbooks, photos and journals. Why would you go through all of that if it wasn't about you? Now our time in this world must end. What? Last night it came so clear. What did? I put two bullets in my gun. I love you. I love you too. What's the matter? You don't have to do that. She wanted the film to look and feel more like a memory, and she intended it to be a female version of the 400 Blows, or boyhood, but not shit. In September that year, she met with Saoirse Ronan at a film festival, and she agreed to read through the script with the director in a hotel room. On just the second page, she already knew that she had found her lead actress. Filming was due to begin in March, but it was delayed as Ronan was performing on stage, before finally beginning shooting on August the 13th, 2016. Ronan had done so much stage work that the heavy makeup underneath the hot lights had caused massive eruptions of acne. However, she refused to wear any makeup to cover it up as she wanted the movie to show what a teenager's face actually looks like in real life. Ladybird was released on November the 3rd, 2017 and ended up grossing $79 million worldwide. It received a standing ovation at its premiere and was incredibly well received for its lead performance and the direction and storytelling. So much so, Gerwig considered doing sequels that there would be more standalone films telling other stories in Sacramento. Anything else I can get while I'm in town? Why are you going to town? We're filming a review! Would you like a tiny tape recorder? Or how about a handmade set of writing slippers? Annie, I think you need help. I go out of my way for you! Don't even think about anybody coming for you. Nobody knows you're here. I miss my mum. If I die, you die. What is wrong with you? The movie also broke a record previously held by Toy Story 2, being the best reviewed movie of all time by Rotten Tomatoes, with 196 positive reviews before finally receiving one stinker. Soon others will come. That was you? The main selling point of the film is the relationship between Christine and her mum, and I hate that I relate to a whole lot of it. Literally, their first exchange leads to practically a suicide attempt. And I'm not sure if it's supposed to be funny, but it kind of is, because they have all of this intensity and it builds up to... And I'd expect everybody to do everything. She didn't get out of the cock-a-doody car! 
No. No, she did. Who did? The arguments between them is so common and hit so close to home. They're so emotional and you can see just how much they affect Christine. Her mum is such a cold bitch who just gaslights and manipulates her for the entire movie. You think your dad and I don't know how ashamed that you are? Of us, your dad knows. Your dad knows why you ask him to drop you off a block away from school every day. Dad, I didn't mean to. You made him feel horrible. Christine, you can't leave your room like this. I didn't. None of these things were put away right. They I, aren't nice. I put Christine, my clothes now. Away. My name don't is Lady Don't lie Bird. to me. This, this uniform, this is gonna look like trash. I just think it's such a shame that you're spending your last Thanksgiving with a family you've never met instead of us, but I, don't know, I guess you want it that way. Do you have any idea what it costs to raise you and how much you're just throwing away every day? These are interesting and very real moments where her mom talks to her like shit, but then instantly misses her when she's not there. You feel like you really go through this journey with Christine throughout the film and you are so proud of her when she finally stands up for herself. You give me a number for how much it costs to raise me and I'm gonna get older and make a lot of money and write you a check for what I owe you so that I never have to speak to you again. She shows the traits of a typical abuser, mistreats her over and over again and then is shocked when she goes behind her back. But this performance is incredible. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I, I appreciate everything you've done for me. I'm ungrateful and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I wanted more. And I was so surprised to find out that she's not actually American. Her accent is insane. When she leaves to go to college, her mum refuses to walk her out and say goodbye and then just drives off. No idea why she drove off when she'd clearly need to come back to pick up her husband anyway, but all right. And after driving away, she instantly realizes her mistake and rushes back, but it's too late. It turns out she also wrote letters to her, but sadly we don't even get to know what they say unless she paused them, I guess, but I can't make out half of this handwriting. It ends with her reaching out to her mum to thank her for everything she's done, which is weird, but very human. This also comes right after she's moved out to college. She very quickly goes to a party, gets completely shit-faced, and ends up in hospital. So despite all the shit her mum's actually put her through, she then realises just how coddled she's become. This is a really interesting and very powerful message that she realised just how much she actually does need her mum, and it's beautifully handled. During the film, Christina's acted out and played up, so naturally some angry reactions are expected. So you can kind of see it from both sides. It's a very powerful and real film. They do mention that her grandmother was an abusive drug but that's really the only explanation given as to why her mum is also such a cold and cruel bitch queen. Maybe that could have been developed upon a bit more. Yeah, okay, maybe. I love the relationship she has with her dad. She trusts him completely and he does his absolute best to help her, even keeping secrets from her mum. He's just a very likeable guy. His son ends up going for the same job as him and despite suffering from unemployment and depression for months, he eggs him on to get the job anyway. You can see just how neglected the poor girl is as she's even surprised that her father remembered her birthday. He's just a likeable guy. Just another lying old dirty birdie. Are you and mom gonna get a divorce over this? No. We can't afford to. Dad. I have to say, Christine is just adorable in this film, and her best friend Julie is as well. They're so cute, man. In fact, I really wish we got to know more of Julie's story. It's all very subtle, and we don't get to know much about her struggles, which could have been really interesting. Now, at times, Christine is a little bit of a bad person. I don't even know how I got cast in my part. Me neither. I was the one who had a dress and prepared a song. Then she starts to hang out with popular girls and a guy more ditching Julie, which is one thing, but then she has a go at her for being upset about it. You are so glad when Julie puts her in a place. But then Christine becomes the absolute biggest asshole on the planet. Listen, if your mother had had the abortion, we wouldn't have to sit through this stupid assembly. <laughs> I might put bullets in it. Yeah, you're not the only one. I feed you, I clean you, I dress you, and what <laughs> thanks do I get? She doesn't clean me. <laughs> now don't be afraid. Shut up. <laughs> The thing is, it doesn't justify it, but when you look at her upbringing, you can see where the anger, frustration, and hormones are coming from. She meets another guy who also claims to have been a virgin and accurately nuts in two seconds, but it turns out he wasn't a virgin and he lied because she has the worst taste in men imaginable. You said you were a virgin. No, I didn't. You fucking did, mate. No. I haven't had sex yet with another person. No, you. Really? Yes. And wait, it wasn't your first time and you still nutted that quickly? I was on top. Who the fuck is on top their first time? She has a point. But she still wants to go prom with him! Are we still going to prom together? But Christine is worse at talking to people than anyone. You... Shut up. You live in the neighborhood? No, I'm from the wrong side of the tracks. Wait, 
What? In fact, none of the teenagers in this film talk like actual teenagers. You don't have a cell phone? No. Good girl. The government didn't have to put tracking devices on us. We bought them and put them on ourselves. I just remembered I had a dream about you. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what what happened? Um, we were we were flying to Disneyland on a giant carrot. If you had boobs, I wouldn't touch them either. Don't worry, I'm not gonna snitch on you. Well, I hope not, because I'd fucking kill your family. Is this just how they talk now? Am I old? Soon you'll be wanting to leave. Annie, I don't live with you anymore. You'll never know the fear of losing someone like you. I'm 31 years old. I know that, Mr. Man! Do you think that Shelly and Miguel have sex on the pull-out couch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who laughs about their son having sex on their couch? You. No, I don't! My son's 12! I better go now. Although completely inaccurate, her son serves her, which isn't allowed in a supermarket. Terrible policy. I just don't get why I'm not good at math. My dad is really good at math. Even Miguel has a math degree. Maybe it's your mom's fault. Or maybe you're just dumb as shit! That's very kind of you. But the movie does have some funny moments. If Danny and I get married and then his grandma died, I'd inherit the dream house. When his parents get it? Oh yeah, we'd have to kill them, and we'd have to kill his older brothers too. Christine starts dating a guy, but then walks in on him cheating with a dude. Okay, I gotta admit, I didn't see that coming. Can't you see it's what God wants? But the movie just breezes past it. She catches him kissing another guy, and then she gets her cast removed, goes to class, celebrates Christmas, then it's New Year, she finds another fella. It's like nothing even happened. And then eventually, weeks later, he confronts her and begs her not to tell anyone, as he's just not ready to come out, which is actually a really emotional and gut-wrenching scene. When do you think is a normal time to have sex? Two o'clock. College? Oh, you mean- okay. There's a scene where Christine and her friend trash a nun's car, but when caught, she doesn't actually get in trouble for it. Sister Gina and I drove all the way home before we noticed people were honky. Uh, how would they have gone all the way up to the car without realizing it immediately? Look at it! Naturally, Christine realizes the error of her ways and ditches her friends to go to reconcile with Julie, and they go to prom together, which is really cute. I just love how the nun glares at the evil sinners. Dirty lesbian bitches. Do you believe in God? Uh, no. Why not? <laughs> uh, it's ridiculous. People call each other by names that their parents made up for them, but they won't believe in God. What's the correlation? Don't believe in God. Birth name. As long as it does exist, your mind won't ever be free. The best way to describe Ladybird is boyhood done right. It's short, but there's never a dull moment and not a dull performance. It's a heartbreaking story, and I think some things could have been developed upon more, such as her mother's motivations and more of Julie's backstory. But it's still an incredibly powerful film, and I would highly recommend you check it out. My family's very angry.